I love cars. <laughs> oh no, that's not a good start. Okay, go on. Theoretically, I love all cars, mm. right? But I understand there's what people want to buy, and then there's the dream cars that we enthusiasts wish would exist, but they sure. can't because sure. there's really no business case around them. There is a business case around the Q3. Mm -hmm. It's a small SUV. Everybody sits up tall. Mm -hmm. You can see the world. Yep. It's got uh, power. When you, when you dig it out, we got to dig for you, it. You and do. When you, when you unearth well, it, hang, hang on. then there's power. <laughs> but I'm not sure what about this is compelling enough to pay $48,000 mm. in this sea of SUVs this size. Mm. Unless you're buying the badge, unless you're buying style, which if that's the case, fine. But I feel like in this day and age, we want more out of our SUVs. Yes, there's power. 228 horsepower, 251 pound-feet of torque. But the first three quarters of the pedal travel is pretty much dead. Yes. There's nothing there. It's yes. like the car makes about four and a half horsepower until the turbos kick in, uh -huh. and then it launches you into outer space. And by that time, the cars have braked in front of you, <laughs> and you don't need all the power at that moment. It comes on at the wrong time. Have you noticed? I have noticed. The struggle that I've had with this is this is the same chassis and the same engine that Volkswagen has put in pretty much all their lineup. It works. That's fine. Eight-speed automatic. Paddles that actually listen. All that is true. If you don't drive it with the paddles, you will constantly think this is underpowered. Constantly. Yes, because that is true. Because you put your foot into it. And as you said, three quarters of the pedal, there's no response. It's like it's and in the last quarter, it suddenly goes, oh, well, oh, wait, I'm sorry. And then it catches its breath like a small little turbo should. And then it launches you. This weighs almost 4,000 pounds. Yes. And the transmission and engine combination is always just a little bit groggy. Great cars, great roads, and all the reasons we love to drive. TV, web, and podcast. This is Everyday Driver. The only way I've gotten power out of it is to anticipate I'm going to need power to pull the downshift paddle uh, maybe a couple Five of times, times before I actually need it. And then the engine's like, oh my God, what are we doing? And now I'm ready yes. to go because it yes. has an incredible amount of delay. But I also drove this and I think I was about two miles into my first drive. And you know what struck me in like, this weird subconscious place back here? Okay, what? Is Oh, well, this feels like every other Golf. And then I, the other, like, the conscious part of my brain had to go, no, but this isn't a Golf. It's an Audi, and it's lifted. And because it's the MQB platform, it feels like a lifted Golf. Yes. And there's nothing wrong with the Golf. There isn't. It's just this is SUV because we buy SUVs. That price of $48,000, when you compare it to a Macan, mm -hmm. is a bargain. But the Macan has dynamics this doesn't have. Yes, this is nowhere close to a Macan competitor. So that's that, well, but theoretically it is, theoretically. Eh. Now you're talking also X1 or Mercedes GLA. Both of those, I would say, are more interesting than this as well. I don't want to give the impression that this is bad. I don't think it's bad. I also don't think it has anything about it that is standout. That's just it. And that is a thing that we're all suffering under with these five-seat mid-size or compact SUVs is that the vast majority of them aren't a standout. I actually like the interior. The seats okay, are decent. Yeah, yeah. I think you know, I think in some ways the, the feel of this feels like you got your money's worth. As far as when I sit here, I like, oh, this was 48. Okay, that feels about right. Really? In here, I think I think we're close. I think we're close. Really? But huh. I, I don't think the dynamics lived up to what I would like when I see Audi badge and I see this is the S-Line package, and I drive it and just go, it's fine to drive. It's, f it's fine. But I don't want to spend $50,000 on fine. I That's agree. the problem. I remember a time when Audis were the step up. They were so unique, they mm. didn't feel like they were connected to Volkswagens in any way. <laughs> maybe a few parts that you didn't see, maybe some switch gear that you kind of recognized, Yeah. but otherwise, it felt like a completely different vehicle. It wasn't the gussied up Volkswagen. Uh, Whereas that's not what this feels that's like. That's true. These start at $42,000 and then fully loaded with the blackout package and the technology package and the premium package. It's the S-Line version too. So totaling almost $49,000. Yep. 48 and change. Yep. You know what else starts at $42,000? Is the Genesis GV70 with the 2.5 liter engine that has a lot more horsepower, looks better, and I think drives better. Mm. 
you don't have to load that out because Genesis GVs can get expensive and they can go past 55 very quickly. And you want the bigger engine and you that want the bigger to be engine. more expensive than this. But I will if we're say comparing that from a starting point, mm. both start at 42,000 and change, the 2.5 liter GV70 yeah, I see starts it. there too. But then you have a little bit more space in the back and better looking style and I think a more compelling vehicle to drive. Mm. And that is the whole point. You're right, this is fine. This has good style. Mm -hmm. It's actually fairly interesting. It's sort mm -hmm. of, when, when you see Germans do the fender flares, you can measure them. They're not sensual, swollen, they just feel and look right. <laughs> you could measure, the, well, it sticks out that far, and it goes this far, and yeah. it, they're this wide, and put it in a box and measure it. And it does have fender flares front and rear. They kind of stick out. There's some muscular stance back there. Remember how great the Q8 looks? Yes. Somebody had a Q8 on the wall and yep. took the Q3 platform and went, let's make that work. And, and they've done a pretty good job because the Q8 <laughs> yeah. is good looking. Yeah. The last Q3 was perfectly fine to look at. This actually looks cool. It does look cool. And it looks yeah, actually a little bigger than it is. It looks like it's Cayenne size. It's not. But it looks bigger in actually kind of an elegant kind of aggressive way. Which it should. But I don't think the actual dynamics or the power match that look. Oh, interesting. So look at these measured lines all the way around. Mm -hmm. The front and rear taillights are very outing. It does have a unique style, especially the front grille looks really appropriate. Everything proportionally is appropriate for this vehicle. It's the tall golf. But then you work your way around and you think, okay, it's the sporty version and where are the tailpipes? You can't bend down and actually see them through a hole. No, no. It's like they're embarrassed to have a tailpipe. Oh, It's so sure. far under the rear valance, you can't see it at all. It's like a, a turtle's head, like shrunken, like <laughs> scared to reveal that it's got a tailpipe way up under there. It has turtle pipes. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so now let's jump into the interior. Yes, you can see the designer sketch. If you don't look at the details that make up the instrument panel, like the screen and the buttons, look at the theme. Mm -hmm. The theme is actually really beautiful and cool and interesting and Audi-like, and I feel like they're starting to find their new voice. They used to be the thing 25 yep. oh, yeah, yeah, years for ago. Sure. Early 2000s, Audi was like, everybody was chasing Audi. Yeah. yeah, they're starting to find that theme again, and it's consistent, and I like it in here too. It just feels like a slight step up from a Golf to me. It doesn't feel mm. like a $48,000 interior. The shift knob is a little small, but okay. It's it's sort of like it wants you to feel like it's a stick shift. But it, it is. It has a look like, I'm a stick? No, I'm not. It, it's really not. Yeah. But look, buttons beside mm -hmm. the screen. Some great buttons. Yes. Easy to, yes. easy controls. You can find yourself. You Very simple and laid out, except for one thing. Mm. Without using the wheel on your steering wheel, the little small mm. wheel, Change the volume. Dare you. Find the, the, the real volume knob. Mm, that is, okay, the, you're the right. It is, it's on the scroll it's on wheel. The steel. Other than that, you're right. Where is yeah, the volume yeah. knob? The passengers the, are stuck in a world with it. Hang on. There it is. Yeah. You had to lean forward. Yeah, I had to fight. It's more it's for than an arm's length away. It's for the passenger. That's it is, yeah. but that's the main volume up, and there's yeah. no bezel, there's no surround. It's, just, right. it's just there. It's pretty cheap looking. Yeah. It's just some printed graphics and a button stuck into the... And I, otherwise a blank panel. True. It, it, this is a surprisingly strange black it, panel it between these cheap. two things. That is really weird. I agree with that. I appreciate it anytime. Thank you. Anytime a manufacturer puts actual HVAC controls mm -hmm. and actual buttons on the steering wheel, you get yeah. points from me because so many people want to put it all in the screen. Mm -hmm. I appreciate that for sure. But you're right. The panel just below the HVAC feels like it cut out. Honestly, this could have come out of any product in the Volkswagen lineup. Yeah. Price be damned. Yes. Anything. Like yes. the cheapest possible polo could have this panel. Uh, it could. When you drive this, when you look at it, you can feel the hierarchy of the breeding. Like you can, it references back to its cheaper ancestors yeah. <laughs> when you're here. There's no question. It tries to look forward and then it references back. So it's in a weird, mm -hmm. who am I kind of thing. But I'm a tall golf. You want more, well, about as much space with the seats folded in the golf, which is pretty decent, but there's a lot of SUVs that are pretty decent. Sure. So the space, and I do like the poles, they're right at the base of the rear seats, so they're not up high. Mm -hmm. Speaking of door pull handles, these are cool. <laughs> it doesn't have to be a modified carabiner. It's very sculptural, and it fits your hand, and it's you don't have to jam your fingers in there and hurt yourself. Well, it's amazing it's how much they've essentially just 
turned the normal pull handles upside down and you go, oh, well, that's neat. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is really good thinking. Also, underneath this metallic strip on the on the door and also elsewhere in the cabin, they do have that LED lighting thing that Mercedes kind of pioneered that you can change the colors. Yeah. When that color happens, it actually puts a really nice cast to the cabin at night. It's actually a nice cabin at night. And the Quattro badge lights up. Quattro. Oh, that's it so special. It lights up in the color that you pick. So you know it's so Quattro because I have the badge that lit up. The materials are nice. It's a nice place to be. Good sports seats. And it's tall. The spatial distance between you and I is like we're in a golf. If Absolutely. If we were eight inches lower, golf. Totally. Volkswagen is having this reality all the way up through the Atlas, the big boys that they're mm -hmm. selling. That MQB platform has become so ubiquitous in their lineup that everything does kind of drive the same. Take some of them are interesting. Some of them are fine. This is in the fine category. But I did drive it, and I did for the first <sighs> mile or two. I just thought, oh, it feels just like a Golf. And then I realized, no, no, it's not a Golf. It's not. <laughs> I want it to be a standout. I want more. But I want that thing that pushes you over the edge that Volvo and Hyundai Genesis. But this is the rarity in this market Jaguar, segment. Most of BMW. them aren't a standout. All right, I gotta drive this. You need to drive. You know, it feels like a Golf over here, too. Does it still feel yeah, like a Golf still, on still that side? Like a golf, yeah. Really? Yeah, it's a Volkswagen huh. product. This is my not surprised face. Uh, I know. All right. I am perfectly floored. Mm. I cannot push the pedal further than it currently is. It really had to find it's itself. Just, well, almost 4,000 pounds, 228 yep. horsepower. Yeah, now we're cooking. Eventually. And I'm about to run into, into traffic ahead of me. But all of a sudden, for a long yeah. time, you kept asking for more, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, you've got plenty. That it's sensation of weirdest. this is enough power comes really late. If you're cruising along, it's fine. Mm -hmm. But when you need the power, you have to downshift a lot. Yep. So move the lever to the right, and it does have paddles. But each paddle click feels like a garage door opener. <laughs> it's like a TV remote. You're right. Click it. It does have clickety, that clickety. garage. It's like that's, the side that's button on your it's, iPhone, it's right? The no, it's that. But that's, that's, that's the, nicer. It's the garage door opener. Right. You are totally right. It it's has a garage that door. It feel. doesn't have very much travel to it, and it's just the tiniest, weakest click. Uh huh. That doesn't say I'm moving along. It's not sporty. So you got to okay. downshift a lot. Yeah. Transmission thinks for a second, and then it gives you all of the power the car can possibly make. Mm -hmm. And then you're kind of moving. Yes. There's no progression anywhere in there. That's a, that's a good assessment. It's nothing, 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 nothing. Boom. <laughs> which feels like we're which feels like old turbos. Like the old school yes, turbos it does. used to be nothing for the first half. This red line's at seven thousand RPM. I think it's really not on boil to nearly five. As far Agreed. As like the feel of it is really late. Okay. But now let's talk about fuel economy. In a small car like this, sure. with a two liter engine, it yep. should be at least 30 combined. Nope. It is not nope. 28. Mm -hmm. But you're not ever going to get 28 because you're going to want the power <laughs> and you're going to mash the gas and it will never return 28. 24 in the highway, 21 in the city. Yeah. You're not going to get that, especially in the city because you're going to want to zip around people. Sure, yeah. It has a nimble enough feel, even though the wheelbase is two inches longer than the Golf. I think it actually handles and maneuvers smaller than it appears. That's that styling I'll, trick I'll again. give you that, yes. The styling feels big. You get sure. in it and it doesn't feel big to drive. It feels fine to drive. It doesn't feel big in the back seats either. Well, that's fair. Th they, yeah. they work. I put three people back there. They weren't thrilled, but you put three people back there. <laughs> How'd they like you after they, they got they, to the uh, they, didn't, they didn't love me. They didn't love me, honestly. It was, Not talk to you for about eight minutes? Yeah, it was my son and my wife and my mother-in-law mm. in the back seat and everybody was okay. <laughs> we went to dinner okay. <laughs> However, I will say that the minute we dropped her parents off, my wife ran and got in this seat. She just could not wait to get out of the back seat. Right. Yeah, that happened right. too. The other thing about this is a progressive steering. It's really just a variable steering ratio, which in sport mode makes this vehicle, all golf, sure. tall golf, kind of tippy. Mm. It, it's too jittery. It's too eager all of a sudden. It's writing checks its body can't cash. It Whoa, doesn't have okay. the mojo to back up what that steering turn in. It turns in real sharp, and then the rest of the car is like, what are we doing? <laughs> I'm What's sorry. What's going on here? The Was steering's that? like, come on, everybody. Turn in sharp and follow me. And the rest of the cars are like... Huh? It, it, was that the doorbell? Did you hear something? Yeah, I get you. I don't know. I don't know what he's talking about. I just go back to sleep. Whatever. There's a TIG one. You know what that also is? A lifted golf. There's another one. This. Yeah. Sport mode. It keeps you in a lower gear. Mm -hmm. And it change, I feel like it changes the steering ratio just a little bit, but then the car is not built to do that. Mm -hmm. You're right. And this isn't the RSQ3. 
nobody's going to be chucking this thing in. It's not the SQ3 or even the RSQ3. This is just Q3. I mean, it's nimble in cities, but I almost wish this felt a little bit bigger or a okay. longer road trip. It's tall and it feel it looks big, so mm. why not drive big for longer road trips? It's not a sports car. Mm, no, it's Volkswagen not. Volkswagen makes the Golf. But otherwise, I like Audi style a lot. Sure. I think they're awesome. I think they're coming back to be at the top of their game based on the concepts that trickle down through the entire lineup. You can see very cool surfaces on this, and it's, it's good looking. I'm excited for Audi's future, but it feels like this is in a time period where they don't know what Audis want to be. So therefore, it'll try to be all things to all people, and that's not the Audi brand. Fair, but I also think that is the SUV thinking. The problem with yeah. everyone should like this, and this is true in this entire idea of the five-seat middle ground SUV is you wind up with a ton of vehicles like this one that are not bad, they're fine. Garage door. It, that's a perfect description, by the way. You nailed that on the first try. Nailed it. <laughs> feels Because e Kate's got one of the aftermarket ones now that we've changed our garage door. It feels exactly it's like exactly that. exactly that. It's a garage door opener. That's perfect. <laughs> Sorry, Audi, but that's perfect. Oh, anyway. <laughs>